Okay, so we're continuing on with our series of videotapes for the head to toe assessment. We're at our last portion. This is the lower extremities, your neurological, muscular, skeletal, that will finish up, um, finish up the entire assessment on our patient. So again, I'm washing my hands. We are gonna start off with, patient can be laying out um, and exposing the area because we're assessing the lower extremities here. Start with inspection. What we're looking for as we look for in all of them, all of the different aspects of the assessment is your skin, continue your skin assessment, any cuts, lesions, moles, uh, rashes, things like that. Notice there's a small uh, lesion or small cut on your left ankle area. What happened there? A bug bite. A bug bite, okay, it looks like it's healing. Scratched. Looks like it's healing appropriately, any drainage, just color. Okay. So you just want to, you know, question, are there any scars, anything that you would possibly be abnormal, have the patient explain what it is and, and you know, what something happened. The other thing when you're inspecting legs that's important to know is hair distribution. As we will talk about in class, the elderly, one of the things that you'll notice um, when they start to develop peripheral vascular diseases, they lose the hair. Uh, on their lower extremities, there'll be, you know, be hair down to their knees and then they will have no hair on their lower legs and on their feet. And that's the reason being is that diminished blood flow. So if the, you know, you look at your patient's legs just upon inspection and they have no hair down there, um, it's going to tell you, particularly, uh, obviously male, if there's a female and you shave the legs, that's a different story, but particularly male, if they're hairy up on their thigh area and none down there, means that that uh, blood flow has been uh, compromised, not able to uh, grow hair. So it's, it's a big indicator of peripheral vascular disease just by inspection. The other thing that we assess for moving on is temperature, just like we did with the upper extremities, the dorsal side of our hands. And again, we want to start at the very top. And again, feeling down, comparing both sides. And it's also important that you're going right straight through the end of their uh, toe area to feel. Hers are a little, her toes are a little bit cold, but she's been uncovered in here, so that's not abnormal. You would also want to look at the color of her skin, you know, upper toe areas, her feet area, are there any, you know, cyanosis, blueness going on, of the nail beds, things like that. Another thing you want to assess lower extremities is your pulses down here. But for your exam, you would be responsible for the feet ones, but just to take note, there's two femoral, your femoral arteries up here that run down the legs that start, branch off the aorta that go off to the femoral that you could assess here. Your popliteal arteries behind the knees, um, but you're going to be responsible for your patient for your head-to-toe assessment is assessing your dorsalis pedis, which is um, on top of the foot. And again, it's a light palpation. And I always like to compare the two, again, to make sure that they're equal in strength and you're able to palpate them. Because if you have a blood clot in one leg um, and the blood flow is compromised, you're not going to have equal pulses, obviously, as well as coloration. So dorsalis pedis uh, on top and posterior tibial pulses in behind the ankle bone here on the um, inner aspects. So again, compare on both sides. If she's got two plus pulses bilaterally, which are normal. Another assessment we do, as we did on hands, is capillary refill of the nail beds. Again, if they're, if they're polished, you can do it above. Again, compare on both sides for the, the blood return back into where you blanch the skin. Should be less than two seconds. If the patient is cold, like her feet are a little bit cold, it's not as brisk as it was on the hands, but that's because of her vasoconstriction because her feet are, um, her toes are cold. So again, normal finding for her, but given the patient's situation, you'd want to assess that. Proprioception, just like we did on the fingers, we're doing the toes. Proprioception um, is neurosensory, so you'd have them close their eyes, ask them what uh, direction I move in their toe, and either right or left. Up on right. Okay, and that's proprioception. <laughs> Range of motion um, is another assessment that we do of lower extremities. Again, we're going to do it to gravity and resistance. So you're, you would instruct the patient to um, bend at her right knee, bring your leg up to here, and can you um, 
go out and then in and then back down. And then do again your left leg. And back down. Okay. So we also want to do it against resistance. So as I hold her leg down, have her try to uh, pull her leg up. Okay. And then underneath. Okay. And then push her leg up. And then underneath. Okay. Excellent. We are also going to assess more sensory. We're going to do the sharp and dull sensation that we did on her face earlier. Again, I'm going to have her close her eyes. I'm going to either, it's going to be sharp or dull someplace on her body. She'll be able to dis distinguish is it sharp or dull. Um, she doesn't need to identify location, it's just whether it's sharp or dull. We want to go up bilaterally, all the way up the body, up the arms, and you want to also make sure you get the trunk as you have different dermatomes on the trunks. You want to make sure that you're also assessing the trunk and not just the extremities. So close your eyes. Sharp. Sharp. Dull. 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 Sharp. Sharp. Dull, sharp, dull, sharp, dull, sharp. Okay, so she's able to distinguish between sharp and dull. Another thing, before I go any further, uh, to go back to the assessment, when we also palpate muscle mass, just like we did in the arms, again, feeling for equal distribution of muscle, depending on if the patient has anything going on. So it's just a matter of palpating down just to make sure that there's no atrophy on either side, any pain or tenderness with that. Nope. So moving on, we are now gonna assess for vibratory sense using the, uh, the tuning fork. And what we do is uh, she's gonna be able to first tell me where I place the tuning fork. We place the tuning fork on some bony prominence on her body. It will be vibrating and then I will stop it. She will be able to, able to identify when the vibration stops and starts and uh, where it's located. So I'll have her again close her eyes. And to, for a tune and fork, you make sure that you hold it by this candle. You hit the tines up here to get it vibrating. Where is it? It's on my ankle. Stopped. It's on your knee. So again, you're assessing both sides and she has a uh, good vibratory sense. She's able to distinguish between uh, when it uh, stops and where it's located. The next series of tests, I'll actually have the patient stand up. And again, making sure that you assist them off the table if need be. All right. So I will have for videotape and I'll have her turn this way. So the very first test that I'm going to do is assessing for scoliosis. To assess for this again, scoliosis is a spinal curvature. I would hold her again, looking just as she's standing here is the spinal column straight. I would have her holding her Johnny lean forward for me. And dangle her arms if she's able to. And what I'm looking for here again. Uh, is the curvature, is the shoulder height, height equal, is the hip height equal? It, if it's not, it would indicate some type of curvature in her spine. Hers are all equal. And then I would have her stand back up. And I would have her put her hands on her hips, both of them. 
And what I'm looking for here is does she make equal triangles with her arms, meaning that her uh, hips are at equal height, and she does there. So that's um, another test for scoliosis. I would then have her watch her gait. So I would ask her, depending on space, if she could walk across the floor. I'm looking for alternating hand movements as she takes steps. Is it she's steady on her feet? Um, you know, does she have to hang on to anything and she has an appropriate gait? I would then ask her to do her heel to toe walk or her tandem walk if she's able to across the floor. around and then come back over here okay right here and that was all within normal limits the next test is Romberg's test cerebellar function test and what I'm going to have her do is she's going to close her eyes I'm going to stand close to her because as they close their eyes some patients uh, lose their sense of balance you don't want them to fall I would have her keep her hands down to her side I'm going to stand with her, and she's able to stand here without swaying for 20 seconds. That's a Romberg's test. If she sways or has to step off, then that would indicate a positive Romberg, which is abnormal. So. Okay. And then the last test that I want to have her do, is uh, step back a little bit, is the finger to nose test. And again, it's e sometimes easier to demonstrate. So have her follow your lead, put your hands out to your side, and take one hand, touch your nose, put it back. Take the other hand, touch your nose, put it back. And then keep going. Speed it up. And then have her close her eyes and do three more sets. And again, cerebellar function and tests to see if there's a problem. And she has normal cerebellar function. So I would have her hot back up here on the table. That concludes our head to toe assessment. I appreciate you being patient today. Do you have any questions for me? No? Okay. So that concludes our videotaping, and uh, good luck to everybody.